Lebanese musician Yasmin Hamdan occupies a unique place in the music industry thanks to her edgy electropop songs with Arabic lyrics. And the Paris-based singer-songwriter just released her second solo album called Al Jamal At. She's now on a promotional tour, so our Ilif Berketli caught up with her for a chat. I don't care about boxes and I don't care about, about some rules and I don't care about, you know, fitting. So, and, and, and luckily, a lot of people are like me. I'm a woman, so I kind of got to be, it's not only being in a box, you, you tend to f find people very conservative with who you are. You don't, you're not the Arabic woman they want you to be. So I had to fight to, to, to kind of improvise my life or choose my life as, as a woman. Now when I look back, I, I realize how stubborn <laughs> I am and how Crazy. So your childhood was always on the move. You lived in Kuwait, Lebanon, Greece, Abu Dhabi. How do you think this influenced your music? I always felt like an insider, outsider. Uh, probably never felt or understood the real meaning of home. I mean, of being a native from one place. But that allows you to be curious about things and to have the freedom to change personalities also, because we, we would be ch changing countries every two or three years. I have a lot of women characters and uh, I also have a lot of songs inspired by taxi driver conversations in Beirut. So it's it's quite, it's kind of my new baby. And we've been touring with it now everywhere. In internet, there's so many definitions about your music, sub-political Lebanese electronica, or intersection of sexy electronica and iconic Arab tradition. And they call you the Lana Del Rey of all Arabs, so they think that you resemble Emma Winehouse and all these kind of things. What, what do they make you feel like? Nothing. I just don't get it. I just don't understand. I don't need to. I, do, I, I personally refuse to, you know, put myself in a box or explain. I don't need to do that. I'm already doing a lot with my work. So if people don't get it, then they don't. And if they do, then they're free to say whatever they want, you know. I could start a song just by because I fell in love with one word and then I have to find the story. So the process is I'm here and then I have a nervous breakdown and I'm depressed and I hate everything I do and I want to stop doing it and I want to become something different, start car racing or any kind of other job in the world. So, you know, I'm just like, oh. I want to go have a vacation somewhere, why my life is not, you know. And so I start having a drama in my head and then suddenly the word comes in and I'm like, oh. I'm just curious what drove you to sing in Arabic because you started in English and then you turned back to Arabic and you sort of rediscovered that language for yourself. I'm just wondering how it happened for you. I mean, artistically, I really truly fell in love with all Arabic music that I rediscovered, you know, um, and I started collecting and I started feeling 
so much desire towards this and uh, feeling somehow a sense of home in a way and sense of belonging which which I missed I had like a, an identity crisis but then it also was my my really motive like my my drive was also uh, a way of resisting a lot of things Do you think your music is political? I mean, every artist is political, but I, I, I try to use the word political in a more abstract way and more poetic way than in, in, a, than in a way that is like asking or claiming for things. I would, I would be more, use it as, as a mean of creating tools for resisting or for creating poetry or music than than to be, you know, just saying, because politics is also something that I don't like. So, so being political is, you know, uh, is different than doing it for political reasons. I mean, you see, you see the nuance is, is not, for me, it's not, I don't claim to be like a hero. <laughs> Mm-hmm.